Hello, this is Rhonda Goins from Bays Mountain Park, and this is Gail Stout. She's a volunteer uh, for Bays Mountain Park. Um, we're going to do our presentation on foxtails. Um, foxtails, um, is, as we're going to bring to you, is a really significant part of the fox, and it does a special, uh, special thing. And this is Jamie the fox. He's called a crossface fox. And the reason he's called a crossface is because he's all three, uh, all colors. He's gold, uh, red, black, silver. Um, so he, when you look down at him, it looks like a cross, a faint cross is on his back and a faint cross is on his face. So phase means colors. So if you do, uh, if you have a silver fox, um, sometimes they can be silver and sometimes they can be also black, right, Gail? Yeah. Uh, so sometimes it's like, you know, if you're a black fox, you're supposed to say a black fox, but well, all the foxes can come in different colors. If you're a gray fox, that's a different species. So gray foxes is a different species than a red fox. And they can all have different colors, like melanistic, leucistic. The American red fox, Vulpes vulpes fulvus, commonly known in the eastern American red fox, is the North American subspecies to the red fox, Vulpes vulpes. Historically, red foxes were classified as two, subspe two species, Vulpes vulpes in Eurasia and Vulpes Fulva in the Americas because their red fox originated in Europe and we brought it over to hunt the fox and the hound, so to speak. Um, so that's why we have it. But now our red fox is a native red fox because it's been here um, for many years. A red fox has a relatively long, dense fur um, and the fur is typically a rusty red color and the legs are darker in color, sometimes even black. Uh, that's how kind of you tell a red fox because it has black leggings and black ear tips and mostly rusty red color. And we're going to get to showing you a lot of pictures of Jamie, our red fox, because he is so magnificently beautiful. And at the end of our program, we're going, we have a, a sanctuary here, Lindsay Hembry. She's, she has a red, she has a red fox and I forgot his name again, Lindsay. Cole. Cole is a red fox and he's absolutely gorgeous. And he's in his winter coat, which means he's really furry. And he looks like he's about 50 pounds, but he's like 14, 15 pounds. This is our Jamie. Uh, he was probably about a one and a half years old here and not in his summer coat. You can tell his summer coat in a heartbeat because he's really fluffy. Foxes have black pointed ears and long canine teeth. Just asked me about two years ago when... Uh, I was trying to pick Jamie up and put him in a cage. Uh, he let me know how many teeth he had. And then I put on gloves and he let me know again how many teeth he had because he can bite right, right through the glove. And uh, so if I, if they don't want in a box, they're not going to get in a box. Um, on their belly, on their underside, the white, their, their fur is white. They're all the different colors all over a normal fox is. Uh, a, nor a male fox, I saw called a dog, weighs 10 to 12 pounds on average. That's in the wild. Uh, while the female fox, known as a vixen, weighs about 9 to 10 pounds. Male foxes tend to have a longer snout as well. But when you have a, a, a fox in, in captivity, of course they can gain a little bit of weight because um, they, you, you feed them correctly. Plus, they don't get as much exercise. They don't run. They don't, do, they don't get all their exercise, so their little bit of fat can go on there. I think Jamie, our fox, probably weighs a good 15 pounds. Uh, male foxes in the winter and the female fox, I'm sorry, I I'm just going to back up here. Uh, red foxes mate in the winter and the female fox gives birth to a litter of approximately 10 kits in the spring. The kits are dark gray in color, don't look anything like the reddish fox, um, but they grow a new coat within a month. Both male and the female fox cares for the kits until they are ready to leave for the fall. So they spend their whole summer uh, feeding them. Uh, teaching them how to hunt. That's the important thing about family life. When they stay together, they, they do teach them kind of like me teaching my children how to make the bed or wash the dishes. Red foxes and even wolves and all their mommies and daddies teach them how to behave and how to survive in the wild. Mom and kids. Um, we don't have babies at Base Mountain Park. Uh, Jamie's a soul, a boy. Um, I don't, and he's, He's fixed, so he would not uh, he would not make babies even if we did have a girl, because that's not what we're all about. We're all about education, 
and um, the, but the kids that would I would love to raise some kids one of these days, but I don't know. But they're so cute. And what they're doing right there is probably food begging. Um, wolves do that. Foxes do that. Coyotes do that. So if mom comes in and she has already ate maybe maybe a bird or a rabbit off the road or killed a rat, um, they would food beg and mother would regurgitate to feed the babies. That happens uh, quite a bit. And that's how they go from milk to meat. And then she would take them on a little hunt. Female foxes reach sexual maturity about the age of 10 months, while male foxes take a little bit longer to mature, kind of like humans. The average lifespan in the wild is two to four years while up in captivity. It can be up to 20. Jamie, uh, Jamie Fox is our um, one's name. He probably could live up to 18 to 20 years. Uh, but in the wild, that shortens it really, really low. Like when I'll talk to you tomorrow about wolves, um, our wolf, uh, the longest living wolf at, at Dray Base Mountain Park, is 14 years old. She'll be 14 years old in April. But average lifespan in the wild, five to six years. So she's going to triple that. Hopefully, she'll uh, live a couple more years. The American red fox differs from the European forms of the greater width of its feet, its longer fur, and noticeably the shorter ears and nose and its finer brush. A brush is, in it, uh, just a minute, Gail's going to tell you all about the brush. According to the accounts, uh, the hunters' accounts, they have less vigor and endurance in the chase compared to the European counterparts. This is where Gail comes in and tells you about Jamie and about the brush. This is beautiful Jamie. He's gorgeous. I think last year, yeah. he's three. Look at his eyes, beautiful brown eyes. Okay. The fox uses his tail, also known as the brush, as a cover in the winter when laying down. This helps insulate and protect the fox from its enemies. Foxes, I mean elements, excuse me. Foxes make their homes by digging burrows in the ground. These burrows are also called dens. This is where they overwinter and have their kits. The red fox is usually recognized by its reddish coat its white tip tail and black stockings. Although the species does have many color variations. The outside of the ears may be black tipped, while the inside is usually white. The white tip on the tail will distinguish this fox from its other species, regardless of its color phase. Red is the most common color, but the hair may be from light yellowish to a deep auburn red. Several color phases can occur in one litter. Red foxes displaying a dis distinct color patterns are referred to by the name of that phase, which is red, cross, silver, and black. The one on the left is called marble coat. Gorgeous, gorgeous fox. I think Lindsay has one of those, yes. right? Two. Uh, the one on the bottom is the red fox, and the one on the right top is the silver. The silver. But he's black. The silver fox. Yes. Mm -hmm. So their, their color variations <clears throat> uh, are awesome. This picture of a red fox across face like Jamie, but it's from the wild. This beautiful one lives in Mount Rainier National Park in Washington. I, I borrowed that picture last week when it's um, Wolf Park. Um, I'm in contact with, they spotted this on the... Uh, on their sister page, and it's very seldom that you see um, a cross phase out in the wild because you know it can occur. All variations of wildlife can occur in the wild, but it's not known to as much. So Jamie would occur in the wild. He just all kinds of mixtures. He's a beautiful fox. This looks like Jamie, but Jamie has a little bit more, I think, a little bit more red on yes. him and darker eyes. Yes. So this might be a female because she's got a shorter snout. I don't know. But this was taken a lot two, two weeks ago on Mount Rainier in Washington. <clears throat> the cross fox, for example, has a black brown cross on the back and shoulders. The silver and black faces are similar. However, black does not have the silver tipped guard hairs, characteristics of the silver fox. The occurrence of the black silver phase appears to increase towards the north and the northwest of Alaska. However, even where most abundant, it compromises 
comprise, excuse me, less than 2% of the population. Mm -hmm. So it can occur, but it's not known to occur very often. Fox packs. A fox can live up to 10 to 12 years in captivity, um, but only last about three years in the wild. Foxes make scent posts with urine or feces to mark their territory. And it very much smells like a skunk. And people that they come to the park and say, where is your skunk at? I say, well, we don't have a skunk, but we have a fox um, that does uh, scent marking more than a skunk, a skunk would. Usually skunks have to be aggravated or um, scared or anything because it's a very uh, precious item because it's, it's oil. And, and it sprays and you, so it's really hard to get off. That's why it's uh, hard to get off because it's an oil. So, but foxes can make their smell known just everywhere. And I, I'm pretty, uh, pretty sure uh, Tim and Lindsay's house smells really, really foxy. Foxes can make 12 different vocal sounds and kits can produce about eight. Foxes are nocturnal. Uh, foxes can pounce on their prey to catch it. And it's really pretty cool if you watch that. Um, they just, they go straight up and I'll tell you why they weigh that how they can do that and get such accuracy. Foxes have ex excellent senses. They can hear an animal underground. Foxes consistently hunt for food. Even though they are not hungry, they will save it for the next meal. Like in Jamie, when I feed Jamie in the morning, I will feed him a rat, maybe some vegetables or and something else, and he'll take like an egg and he'll hide it. He thinks he's hiding it, but well, of course we can all see it. But see, he's hiding it and he's eating the rat. So he's hiding his food. So in case he don't have food to more later, there you go. He's got food for the midnight snack. A large part of their uh, their uh, their food is invertebrates: crickets, caterpillars, grasshoppers, beetles, and crawdads. Fox predators include coyotes, bald eagles, gray wolves, bears, mountain lions, and humans. This is beautiful, beautiful Jamie and his. I wish he had a really big outside pen, and that's that maybe this year he might get that. There's a strict dominance hierarchy within the social groups. Kits start to establish uh, their dominant hierarchy before they emerge from the, from the earth and from their dens. When fights particularly really vicious, uh, we had a wolf one time that come out of her den. We named her Natar with the scar because she had a, a scar before she even had her eyes open. Um, about 20% of kits die underground, often as a, re a result of spats with siblings. Because, you know, they have teeth. They're, they're born with teeth, and they're very, very sharp. This hierarchy is largely established within seven or eight weeks, and thereafter serious fights are rare because they kind of, their puppies have their, or kits or pups have their own little system, and the adults have their own little system. And then when they grow up to maybe a year or two, they will go into that system and follow the rules of the, the pack. This is beautiful Jamie in a close-up, and I don't have the time. More facts. Yeah, you want to read those more facts? Yeah. The fox is a distant relative of a wolf. They can hear a watch ticking 220 feet away. I mean, 120 feet away, excuse me. And also hear a mouse squeak 100 feet away and will dig in the dirt or snow to catch its prey. They can also use 28 different types of calls to communicate with each other. They can run up to, whoa, 30 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And they have mobile ears, which can be turned to focus. On the sound. There you go. Possible prey. Wolves can do that too. And, and guess what? She probably told you for you to make your smell is somewhat like a skunk. It's kind of a little bit, I don't know, it, it don't burn your nose mostly like a skunk, but they smell like a, a faint skunk uh, 30 feet away. Uh, and and it, it, it stinks, you know. But, you know, I say, you know what? That's just Jamie's smell. Look at him. He's a young mm -hmm. man. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Brown. How he got his name, I would not have named him Jamie the Fox um, because one of their, uh, our, we have interns every year, and if we get a new animal uh, and they called him Jamie, it just stuck. So uh, Jamie Fox is his name. I think I was going to call him Jasper, but that's okay. 
uh, how he was uh, come to live at the park. Um, he had many different owners and he wound up in a kill shelter and TWRA intervened and called me and said, Rhonda, can you take a fox? And uh, a lot of people, you know, don't know, don't know about foxes. And I said, of course I'll have a fox because we can't take wild foxes. We can only take um, foxes that are born, born in captivity, which is legal in the state. But um, sometimes it, it kind of don't work out very well. Or other states, other states, uh, we can transfer them to the, this state. He came from uh, somebody in Virginia, so uh, then he got turned into a, a shelter uh, that was in Virginia. And more. A group of foxes is called a skulk or a leash. I didn't know that until I put this fox, uh, this show, show together. Had no idea. I thought they were called packs. Uh, they have whiskers on their legs as well as their face, and which can uh, help them navigate. They also have great night. Uh, they also have great nighttime predators. They are so, can I even, I can't even back up. They also are great nighttime predators because they are specifically adapted to the night vision. They have vertical pupils, stalk and pounce, and they have spines on their tongue like cats. So they're, and everybody says, well, they're like cats. Well, and they're not cats, but you know, they're they're not even a canine, they're canidae. Um, so that's, they, they cannot breed with a dog. A lot of people probably call Lindsay and call uh, other fox owners at your education and want to breed. People have asked me that. If uh, Jamie can breed with their dog, I say, well, it's not possible. Uh, well, they're canines. No, they're not canines. They're in the same family a long time ago, Kennedy. And they can, they can climb pretty much, but gray foxes can climb pretty good up a tree like a cat. Uh, but Jamie and Lindsay's foxes can climb uh, all, all kinds of things in their habitats. This is Jamie about two weeks ago, and he's got his favorite, one of his favorite foods in his mouth. That is a piece of cheese. He loves cheddar cheese. So that's what he looks like today. Look at his tail. It is humongous. Mm -hmm. And he is, he's got the prettiest undercoat. It, uh, their undercoat, when I teach kids, is like kind of like under armor. He has his own under armor. It grows out of his skin. And when and then he's got guard hairs. And then when the rain or snow falls on that, uh, he don't get wet. He just shakes, 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 and he gets dry. That's why dogs shake to get all their uh, water and snow off their uh, guard hairs. So he's beautiful. About, about three more months, he'll start to shed all of that under fur. And everybody said, oh, he's, he looks like he's got mange. He looks, I said, no, it's a, he's shedding all that winter coat off, and he's got a lot of winter coat in there. Uh, he looks scraggly, so. Um, foxes have a special scent like a guided missile. A fox can see the Earth's magnetic field as like a ring shadow on its eyes and the darkness as it heads towards the magnetic north. When the sound and the shadow, the prey, is marking up a line, it's time to pounce. So they can, they have a kind of like a turtle since um, they go by, uh, a lot of animals do this, like dolphins, uh, turtles, um, I don't know, there's a lot of animals that have magnetic sense, but foxes are only thought to have this magnetic sense to discover food and use it for food, not placement. Um, they have a magnetic sense, but the fox is first discovered uh, to use to catch their prey. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's why when you see on TV, they, they you know, kind of hover and hover over a rat and then they pounce and they go straight down. I think they got 75 to 80 percent good rate. And naughty night, Jamie is asleep and he's uh, he's so sweet. Well, is it time to bring uh, Lindsay in and show show and we can have questions and answers about this particular beautiful boy. When it, you want to scoot the chair over here, and I can. And, you're a pretty boy. Yeah, I'll get the chair. Go. I'll get the chair. We can sit in mine. This is Lindsay Hembry, owner of what? Exotic Pet Wonderland. Yes. We are Tennessee's only current sanctuary that focuses on these guys. We take in foxes, raccoons. Uh, we even have a resident bobcat. This is Cole. He is 
perfect example of a beautiful red fox. He is almost five years old and he's burning up in here because of his very, very thick coat. Yeah. This is his guard hairs. It guards his fur. So his his undercoat is that fuzzy stuff that falls off of your dog in, in the springtime. Uh, all dogs don't have it because, you know, all dogs are not meant to live outside now like your chihuahua. But uh, your labs and all that stuff has that. And he's a beautiful black tipped ears kind of color inside. And he's got a gorgeous, gorgeous tail. He don't care what we do to him, but he's because we're always nice. And he's a, he's an awesome fox. Uh, he's been at Wilderness Wildlife the week before or last year. Yes. And then the last year before that, I think we had the kit. We had our female that um, got her tail licked off by her mommy. Yes. That happens, you know, stuff happens in nature. Uh, the mother, when she was grooming, um, they do such a good job. So sometimes they do such a good job, they groom and that her tail fell off. So uh, she's beautiful. I see her. Uh, I see Lindsay post all the time, um, showing her off. She's she's gorgeous. You're a good boy. Underneath his fur is black. Yeah, he's got oh, black that's... fur underneath. Wow, that's gorgeous. It's beautiful. That's all that fuzzy stuff. Oh yes. He is about 95% coat right now, and he's already starting to shed some of it. Yep. What does he eat, Lindsay? Cole eats about a half a pound of raw meat a night um, mixed with vegetables and fruits. His favorite thing in the world is an egg, mm -hmm. as most foxes enjoy. Yes. And then Does he get, kind of take it and then drop it to bust it open? He carries it around for hours yeah, talking and, to yeah. it. Yeah. Once once he's done talking with it, he does carry it around and he'll he'll drop it down on a hard surface to crack it, and then he just licks up all the outs inside. Well, see, this I thought this was weird when I first give Jamie an egg. He was probably about three or four months old, and um, I didn't, you know, he's not been taught how to do this with an egg. Uh, and I give him the egg, and he's kind of like he looks around at it and looks around at it, and then run up on side of the rock and just dropped it. And of course, and then he ran back down there and ate the insides. So that was in his brain. Nobody taught him how to do that. And he loves his eggs. He gets his eggs and hides them and puts them under rocks. And then later, um, we don't bust them for him because he does them himself. Yep. He likes uh, ours. He eats like rats, mice, fish, tilapia. Um, Jamie's favorite vegetable is cucumbers. Loves 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 cucumbers and red peppers. Oh. Favorite would be broccoli or Brussels sprouts. Who likes those? See, a lot of people think foxes only eat they like vegetables, uh, fruit, uh, not much fruit, but they will eat fruit every once in a while. Jamie likes uh, blueberries and um, Jamie likes pears. He loves pears. He don't like peaches and he don't like yellow squash. I'll tell you what he did one time and then we'll take questions, right? I don't even know if it comes to questions. Um, we give him some yellow squash. And other things in the bowl because we always give him like five or different, five different things, you know, so we see out of a variety. So uh, when up there in the morning, here's the squash and it's all over the pan. And then I said, Well, you're not going to eat the squash. So I went back out there in the evening. Everything was done except he had put the squash back in the bowl. And guess what he did in the bowl? He peed on his squash. So we've never given him squash anymore because he just don't like that. So whatever he pees on and puts back in the bowl, he actually put it back in the bowl, so I said, squash is a no-no. We got a, we get a lot of uh, volunteer, uh, volunteer donations. Um, they give us all kinds of food, like you know, apples and carrots, and uh, all, sometimes different foods. And that's how we got the squash. And he said, no, I don't want that. So Cole also loves watermelon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Questions, guys? What What okay? What months of their coats change in thickness and stuff like that? Uh, probably late October, no, November. It's according on the the weather outside. Jamie's uh, about first of November. He got real. You can tell from one week to the next they get real really furry, um, and then their color changes uh, from pups from pups to the normal. Is that what they're asking? From puppies. Colors. They'll start losing fur. Um, oh, yeah, about uh, late February all the way through April really depends on the weather. Yeah. 
and where you're located. Obviously, higher elevations are going to stay fluffier longer, whereas lower areas, you know, down south, mm -hmm. they're going to change center. Cole's already starting, yeah. but he could keep this coat another couple of months before he's fully finished. Now, Jamie won't start at all because Jamie's a purely outside fox. He, uh, he stays outside 24-7. And he has, you know, dens and little houses and stuff like that. But uh, I think uh, Cole is a both both inside and outside. He can come and go. As yeah, he can he can come inside his house, you know, or go outside. He chooses to be outside usually, but yes, he's already shedding all over. Okay. Him. Sly like a fox. Explain. Oh, they will get into everything. They'll hunt down what you like most or what seems most interesting to them and they'll hide it. They'll, they'll imitate other people's moves. Say they think you're going to go one way. They'll trick you out to where if you're trying to, you know, catch one, if predators are trying to catch them, then they can outsmart them. They're very, very intelligent and they're very mischievous animals as well. I give them like five minutes inside a pen to work with them. They're like a two year old on, on Red Bull. That's what I tell kids. And uh, an, an instance when they're shy, I was feeding Jamie the other day, and he knows he's not supposed to have a red solo cup. But sometimes I take and dump stuff like that, take it out. And then he was looking around, thought, what are you, why are you not pouncing on this egg or whatever? He was having in his brain, I want that red solo cup. And he tricked me. First time ever, he tricked me and got that red solo cup and took all, all across this habitat. So I had to trick him to get it out because he, they're very, very sly and very mischievous and very, they get down low uh, under your radar. I think it's about 60, 60 days. days. 60 to 63, 60 days. same kind of, kind of like a cat and, and a wolf and a dog. Uh, their gestation is roughly two months. Just keep going for huh? Okay. 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 How can you tell the difference between a female and a male fox? Well, um, the males are going to be a little bigger. Usually. They'll usually have a wider face and a longer nose. It's not always, but females tend to have more narrow features, more feminine features. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's true in wolves, too, and deer, because, you know, sometimes you can tell a deer before it gets antlers if, if what it is, because they have a, a shorter nose and then the girls have kind of a slender sm uh, snout um how did i get how old did i get jamie and how old is jamie jamie's a boy jamie's a uh an intern named him jamie jamie fox um and then he is four years old we got him at about two months old with a broke leg he had a broke leg and you can't even tell it now so. and he's he'll be four this year No, not unless somebody aggravates the fox. Uh, foxes are usually sly, and you don't even know they're around. And um, in most cases, they will run and try mm -hmm. to avoid at all any confrontation. With because we are danger. A coyote is danger to a fox. A car is danger to a fox. A wolf, bear. But uh, usually, that you don't never know they're around at all uh, unless you uh, aggravate them. And of course, if you aggravate an, any wild animal, they're going to take their they're going to take their part. I don't blame them. Life expectancy of a fox, 10 to 12 years in captivity, three to four years out in the wild, but it's known maybe to 18 to 20 years. That's probably the longest living fox um, in, in zoos and stuff. The oldest fox I ever had since I've been to work there, is four years old because this is the only fox I'm in care of at Base Mountain Park. Uh, what's the oldest fox you've got, uh, Lindsay? Uh, ours are right about to be five. So mm -hmm. that's the oldest we've had. Um, I would expect they lived about probably 10 more years. Uh, oh, yeah. Maybe, yeah. They're perfectly, what can tell what, uh, of course, we have to give our foxes uh, shots and uh, vaccinations and medicine and all that stuff. Makes them live longer. And they get the best diet. Mm -hmm. They don't have to eat out the trash can. 
Well, thank y'all guys. I'm, uh, this is my, me and Gail's first video conference, whatever it's called, a video Zoom. Uh, and tomorrow we're going to be uh, talking about the wolves of Bays Mountain. I'll, I'm not going to have a wolf with me um, because they don't mind like foxes. They won't sit here and act nicely because they want to run and tear up the whole building. And um, I appreciate everybody's uh, listening to me and coming to see Lindsay and Cole and even Gail. Gail, uh, we not too bad in front of the camera, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you all, guys. I'll see you tomorrow, 9 o'clock.